I'm excited. We are broadcasting live on the Kingdom Wealth YouTube channel, Kingdom Wealth LLC, and on the Kingdom Wealth Facebook channel, or Facebook page on Facebook Live. And so the Kingdom Wealth Facebook page is Kingdom Wealth 7, um, if you're looking for the, the group on Facebook. But it's happening simultaneously right now. They are public and live videos so that you can go back and watch them either on the YouTube channel or on the Facebook page as well. I am excited about this Kingdom Wealth workshop because of what God has told me about the topic. We are expecting a few more people so you guys can just listen out and watch out for them so you can direct them in um, as we just continue into what God has for us today. Most of you know me, especially those of you who are live in this room, um, but everybody may not. And so I certainly want to introduce myself. Um, I'm Marquita Brooks, the CEO and founder of Kingdom Wealth LLC. Um, as well as a motivational speaker. Kingdom Wealth LLC is a business coaching consulting firm. I'm also a wife, a mom, and a grandmother. Um, I've been an entrepreneur since 2001. I've served as a business consultant for various enterprises, and I currently serve on seven nonprofit board of directors. I have a degree in leadership studies from the University of Richmond. Um, for 12 years, I was the president of, the, of a multiple six-figure corporation. And then after I sold that company, I became the marketing and outreach coordinator, um, a consultant for a seven-figure corporation. And so now, as I'm establishing Kingdom of the LLC, I'm doing it simultaneously as I lead the Truth in the Spirit as the founder and senior apostle, which was established in 2001. And so I praise God that these things are all coming together because Truth in the Spirit serves to unite believers globally, not just individuals, but also whole ministries and groups, particularly Christians and Messianic believers, and then also, uh, we do this through lots of different things in the Tidewater region, which is where we're based, in the Tidewater region of Virginia, but then also in all types of trainings throughout the world. Um, I've written lots of training curricula and two books, one of which is Five Biblical Keys to Unlocking Wealth. And I'll be referring to this one today as we look at the Serving Hidden Treasures. Uh, key five is going to be really important. And so we'll look at that a little bit today as well. But know that you can connect with me either through the Truth in the Spirit at info at truthandspirit.org or through Kingdom Wealth at Marquita, M-A-R-K-I-T-A at kingdomwealthllc.com. Now, the Kingdom, um, Kingdom Wealth LLC is specifically a God-centered business coaching and consulting firm. The goal is to really help believers discover their purpose, fulfill it, through successful businesses and make a positive difference in the world. That is essential to what we do because what God has initially placed on my heart is that we've got to have finances, his particular wealth, to do his will. And so he gives us the power to create wealth and he's positioning us even now that we would receive that wealth and that we would use it as he determines that we be good stewards so that we can actually finance his kingdom and do the things that he has called us to do. And so specifically, I help current and potential business owners discover your purpose, create a life vision, and establish a successful enterprise so that you can make a positive difference in the world by living the life you want to live. I'm like a traveling locksmith on your providing keys on your journey to success. And that analogy is important to me, always talking about keys, because the reality is everything we need is already around us. The challenge is unlocking it, and that's one of the things that we're really going to be focusing on today. We got to find those hidden, hidden treasures, but then we've got to unlock them. And so it's, it's really a key component for believers because God has given us the keys to the kingdom. And we're like children running around with something really valuable, but most times we have no idea what to do. With it. And if we can really connect with that, if we can really figure out those treasures that are all around us, understand them, discover them, and then understand the power of the keys that he has given us, the keys to the kingdom, and then use those in connection with the, the treasures that he reveals, everything that he wants for us will be right in our hands because he's already provided it. Yeah. And so these Kingdom Wealth Workshops are generally an hour and a half. We have them at least monthly. And the purpose is to help entrepreneurs start, scale, and optimize your business while advancing the kingdom of God. And so they're always held in conjunction with the ministry. And so today, of course, this Kingdom Wealth Workshop is being held with Kingdom Wealth LLC and the Truth in the Spirit. So this particular workshop is being held during the time when Truth in the Spirit would have our Priesthood Academy training. And so this is actually part of the Priesthood Academy training, but it's a Kingdom Wealth Workshop. And Kingdom Wealth provides these workshops for ministries 
and um, other organizations throughout the region so that we can actually empower believers with these truths. The goal is to bless not only the believers that are present, but also the ministry that hosts the Kingdom Wealth Workshop, which is why the workshops are always held in conjunction with ministry or in houses of God. Amen. So you can let me know if you're interested in hosting a Kingdom Wealth Workshop at your particular ministry or church or Messianic congregation. And if you're interested in all of the videos for all of the Kingdom Wealth workshops and you like the videos that came out of the Kingdom Wealth conference. So every training we've done and every training we will do, they're all offered as a part of what I call the Kingdom Wealth Treasury. If you go to our website, KingdomWealthLLC.com, there is a page that on the letdown menu that says Treasury on it. When you click that page, it is a members only page. When you subscribe for $40 a month, become a Kingdom Wealth member, you get access to the Kingdom Wealth Treasury. So whenever we get new trainings, they go directly on that page. And so you're able to go through, you can watch the ones from the workshop or from the conference last summer. You can watch the other two Kingdom Wealth workshops, which I'll be connecting with this one today. So I'll be referring to them today as well. And so this is a way that no matter where you are in the world, you can get all of the trainings that come forth out of Kingdom Wealth LLC. All right, so giving you a detailed introduction, now I want to talk to the people in the room because I like to answer questions and I like to make sure that what's going forth is relevant to who you are and what you do. And so because we're live, I'm not able to really answer questions to the people that are online because then I have to be manning the computer and all that while I'm going to the workshop, but I can answer your questions. And so you don't need to share your name because like I said, we are live, but please share the type of business that either you lead or that you're interested in leading because that will actually help me to gear the answers to the questions and even the examples for the workshop today will be connected with the industries that you guys are working in. So just share the industries that you're in or the type of business that you either have started or would like to start. I'm gonna start over here. Just share your industry or your business. Real for profit, real for profit. Hello, Lois. Hello, Lois. Yeah. Tell me, no. uh, emergency preparedness. Okay. <laughs> something down the book club, like ministry books. Something down the book. Books, okay. Hospitality retreats. Hospitality retreats? Yes. Um, branding and creative strategy. Branding and creative strategies. Okay. In the back. Dance studio. Dance studio. Gentlemen in the back, y'all want to share the types of businesses? Web development. Web development. Yes, ma'am. Oh, uh, retail and insurance. Retail and insurance. And what industry or business are you in? I want to make sure I gear the examples to you guys. Amen. Agriculture and farm. Agriculture and farm. Thank you so much. Food Thank you so much. I'm glad you could join. <laughs> because we're live, I'm just asking the industry and business type as opposed to names. And also, when you share questions, don't share names <laughs> because we're live <laughs> to make sure that we, you know, we keep everything where it needs to be. So that's where we start. We always jot down our questions first. So I want you to shoot out your business questions to me. And we will build a page and throughout the workshop, we'll answer them. So business questions, are you going to your business questions specifically about your business? This is what we're here for. Yes. When do I get started? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so when you schedule your individual coaching call with me, <laughs> we're going to talk about that because you got started in August. <laughs> so what is your specific question? Because there's a follow-up question. Maybe the next steps. What's the next step? What's the next step? All right. What's the next step? And that is going to be an important question for all of us. What is the next step? Because there are times when you do what you know you need to do, and then you don't know what else to do after that. And that's a big deal <laughs> because it can cause you to lose time and energy because you're stuck and don't know what the next step is. All right. Who else has a question? Yes. How do you raise capital? Raising capital. How do you raise capital? I think that question will benefit everyone in the room. Also. How do you raise capital? That's a good one for today as well. Any other questions? 
No other questions? Are y'all sure? Yes. You have a question? No? Y'all sure? Yes. How do you know what career you're supposed to be in? Oh, that's a great one. <laughs> How do you know? What career? And I'll add for business. What business you should be in? That's actually one of my favorite questions. Yes. How do you say what's the best form of advertising for your business? Mm -hmm. I know I'm missing one word. How do you, what's the question? The word? Decide. Decide. Thank you. I didn't hear you. Decide the best form of advertising. For your business. Gotcha. How do you decide the best? That's a great question, too. Form of advertising. For your niche. Your also, um, uh -huh. uh, forms of networking, uh, different uh, networking uh, things that are out there, like, uh, you know. You put networking into the question. Networking events? Networking events, opportunities, you know, stuff like that. Networking with the question. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer because we'll remember what you're saying. Okay, any other questions? Those are great questions, especially for today because they're completely aligned with what we're going to talk about what guys are doing today. Any other questions? Those are really good questions. And I thank you guys for help other people that are watching as well as we answer your questions. Okay, wonderful. Now, I'm going to be referring to a few things. Like I said, I'm going to refer to the five biblical keys to unlocking wealth book um, because there's some things in there that are actually going to help us to connect with discovering these hidden treasures. A few of them are on the table here if you haven't been able to purchase them and you'd like one, but you can also get it at seven, no, a seven day coach, at five keysbook.com, the number five keysbook.com, or it's on barnesandnoble.com and amazon.com as well. Additionally, I'm going to be referring to a couple of my coaching programs, particularly for your question about um, how do you decide or how do you know what career or business you should be in. I'll be referring to Discovering Your Divine Design, which is a coaching program that helps you particularly discover the answer to that question. Um, then also I'll be refer referring to uh, Prosperity Startup Coaching for raising capital, um, advertising for your niche. Um, and I'll add networking. In. I don't think we necessarily talk about networking specifically in startup coaching, but we'll talk about it today. So I want to let you know those things that I'll be um, connected to. And I always reference the seven day coach. If you have not downloaded the seven day coach, it is a, a video coaching program that is completely free. You can go to seven day coach is the number seven D A Y dot coach. And what it does, it takes you through the seven days of creation and how God, how God reveals how we go from the initial concept of something to the full development and realization of it. And so he shows us not just in a business development, but in ministry development, organizational development, and also in development of our own identity and purpose. All of that is right there in the seven days of creation. What's that website again? It's the number seven day dot coach. So seven day dot coach. And it's on our website. Everything I'm saying today is on our website, kingdomofllc.com. But that, I just believe, needs to be in everybody's hands, which is why it's a free uh, video coaching series. All right, so let us go to God's topic for today, Discovering Hidden Treasures, Part 2. Now, you guys will remember from Discovering Hidden Treasures, Part 1, last month, that the purpose for which God provides treasures that are hidden is so that his will will be done. We saw that in Isaiah chapter 45 verses three through six, when he was talking about Cyrus, how he had hidden treasures, he would give him hidden treasures. The reason that the treasures are hidden is so that only those who are seeking God will find those treasures. Does that make sense? That's why they're hidden. He, he literally did rest on the seventh day, meaning within the first six days, he provided everything you're gonna need for life, godliness, business, ministry, it's already been provided. But some of it is hidden because he only wants it to be discovered by those who are actually interested in fulfilling the will of God as well. Does that make sense? And so it's important that if I'm trying to discover hidden treasures, the first thing I got to do is discover God and find out what his will and purposes are. 
Now, last month we also talked about that his ultimate will is saving souls. Plain and simple. That's that's number one on God's list because he wishes that none would perish. And so because of this, if my heart is for saving souls, if my heart is for people to have relationship with God and intimacy with God, he is going to bless my endeavors toward that end. Now, the first thing that we've got to understand about this in discovering hidden treasures, because there's four things we're going to talk about today. The first treasure we want to talk about is your business. Your business is a treasure. Now, if you didn't hear that or get it in your spirit, I'm going to make sure that you do. Because we can't go forward until you believe that that's the truth. Go to Matthew chapter 13. And we're going to read verses 45 and 46. This is a parable. This is a parable of the pearl. Verses 45 and 46 of Matthew chapter 13. And I'm reading this in the NIV. This is how it reads. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away, sold everything he had, and bought it. Now, people say, well, that's about the kingdom. How is that about my business? It's specifically about the kingdom. It is. And so what the Lord is specifically telling us is that if I am interested in the kingdom of God, I'm going to have to give everything I have for it. Does that make sense? I got to give my all to really pursue the kingdom, right? We, we get that that is the, the immediate meaning of that scripture, is that the kingdom has to be the goal. Boom. Give my all for the kingdom. Now, what we have to also understand, though, is that the kingdom of God, of course, has a king, and the king is trying to reach everybody on earth. And the way he reaches people on earth is through other people, and he reaches multitudes of people through vehicles, called businesses, ministries, and organizations. So if the kingdom of heaven wants to reach millions of people, he's going to use businesses, ministries, and organizations. Because any one organization, any one ministry, any one business can touch hundreds, thousands, millions of people. Y'all understand what I'm saying? So you may not see it this way. But God sees your business as a treasure. And it's, it's key that you get this. Because your business it is directly linked to the kingdom of God. Directly linked to the kingdom of God. Your business, should you choose to receive this from God, can be a vehicle that he uses to bring people into the kingdom, multiple people, hundreds, thousands, even millions, into a relationship with him because he wishes that none would perish. Now, while you as an individual can bring people to salvation, you can touch so many more people through your business or ministry or organization. Y'all see what I'm saying? So if I get that God sees my business as a treasure, it is valuable to him then I understand that my business is a part of the kingdom. Now, in the very first kingdom of workshop, we talked about true wealth. We talked about that the kingdom was first. It superseded the wealth. I saw first the kingdom of God, then he added all these things unto me, right? So if I'm seeking the kingdom, and if God is helping me develop a business, then my business is a part of the kingdom and a vehicle that God can use to bring more people into the kingdom. Therefore, I must apply Matthew chapter 13, 45 through 46 to my business as well. Meaning, you will have to let go of other things so that you can build your business. The man who found the pearl of great value sold everything else he had because he realized the pearl was what he really wanted. Amen. You can't go into this as your plan B. You can't say, well, I'm going to build a business in case my career doesn't work out. Because if that's your mindset, your business will never be successful. Ever. At some point, you're going to have to take risks to build your business. And if you are properly aligned with the kingdom, 
and your business is properly aligned with the kingdom, you're risking for your business because you're risking for the kingdom. This is what proper alignment, we're going to talk about that today. Does that make sense? This is key that you understand that because I've got to see the treasure that's in my business. I've got to see that God sees my business as a treasure and I have got to focus my energy and my resources on building my business. This is step one. If you don't get past this one, the other three things I have to say aren't going to mean anything. If you don't see your business as a kingdom treasure, nothing else I say today is going to matter. Now, this is a big deal because it shifts now the way I think about my business. If I'm trying to create a, a money man, if I'm trying to create a cash cow, right? I want something that's going to make me lots of money. Well, then the challenge is my focus is on the wealth and not on the kingdom, right? So what we just said is not true. It's not going to be true for my business. If my business is just about lining my pockets, then this is not true about my business. This is only true about my business if I have gotten serious with God and I have asked him, who am I? What is it that you designed me to do? And how do I fulfill that purpose through my business ministry or organization? Now, if I've had that conversation with God, then my business ministry or organization is a kingdom treasure and it will bring souls into the kingdom and I have to see my business as a treasure. And the reason I've got to see it is because some of these hidden treasures that we're talking about today will be locked up in my business. Some of them will be in my very own business. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I've got to make these connections. Now remember what I said, because I can't go through everything today. And that's a huge disconnect for you. If you're like, okay, I don't see my business being a part of the kingdom and me bringing souls to the kingdom. We talked about it last week. I mean, last, last kingdom wealth workshop. The one on uh, part one, Discovering Hidden Treasures part one. We talked extensively about it. You might need that video. But you also may need Discovering Your Divine Design. Because very honestly, we only have one life. And anything you're doing that's outside the purpose for which you were designed is a waste of your time and your energy. Plain and simple. There's no other way to look at that. So what I've got to do then when I realize that is that I've got to say, Lord, help me shift. Now, you don't just jump shift. Because it will affect your life. <laughs> you see what I mean? Instead, what you've got to do is you've got to let God show you how to shift. He can transition you. Like he, the children of Israel cried out for deliverance for years before they actually were freed from Egypt. So you got to say, okay, I realize it now, God. Now I need you to show me how to make this shift. And he'll start first in your own thinking. He'll shift your thinking first. Then he'll start to shift things within you and things within your life. And then he'll actually make the, the full shift where you're actually doing what he's calling you to do. But you got to realize it first. You got to realize it first. So that's the number one. Like I said, we're going to come back to this one, but it's important that it's really in your soul that your business is a kingdom treasure because it will require sacrifice. Building your business is going to require, I'm not talking about short term, like just a little bit, just as much as I feel comfortable with, because that's not sacrifice. And it's within your comfort zone, it's not sacrifice. Your business is going to require more of you than you want to give. And if you do not see it as a kingdom treasure, it will not be worth it for you to do that. And what will happen is you'll keep looking for the right business for you. When you find it, don't look any further. Commit all your resources to building that one. Even though it'll be hard. Because you will gain, gain ground and you will move forward because you committed to what God revealed was his will. Does that make sense? Hence, the seven-day coach, day one. That day one experience is where me and God have that conversation so that we kind of determine what his will is for me. Is it a business? Is it a ministry? Is it an organization? Sometimes God just puts something in your heart. You don't know which one of these it is. You're not sure. Day one conversation sorts that out. All right, so now the second thing that we need to know is that the whole Bible is a treasure. The whole Bible, taken together, is a treasure. Now, in Exodus chapter 19, verses 5 through 6, the Lord said to Israel, 
just as he was about to give them the Ten Commandments, he said, if you obey my commandments, you will be my treasured possession. Right? If you obey my commandments, you'll be my treasured possession. The whole earth is mine. You'll be a kingdom of priests for me. So they become the treasure because they obey the commandments. And we know the commandments were in the Old Testament or the Old Covenant, the Law of Moses, the Torah. Now, we know that Messiah said in Matthew chapter 16, verse 19, I give to you the keys to the kingdom. So what we have then is we have an Old Testament treasure. And we have New Testament keys. <coughs> What scripture is that? In the Old Testament, it was Exodus chapter 19, verses 5 through 6. This is just before he releases the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments is Exodus chapter 20. So he's preparing them. He's about to show up on the mountain and, and with the thunder and the lightning and then give the Ten Commandments. And so he says, if you will obey these commandments, you will be my treasured possession. And then the Messiah says to Peter, I give to you the keys to the kingdom. Now, this is a big deal because we've got treasure that's been in existence for thousands of years. We've got keys that are at least 2,000 years old, but most of the time, the keys and the treasure are never together. <laughs> most of the time, they're separated. We have to understand that that was a deliberate attack from Satan to keep the keys away from the treasure. Wow. He didn't have to steal the keys. If he keeps the keys away from the treasure, nobody benefits. Everybody's still losing out. But if the keys and the treasure come together, what do we have? We have wealth beyond our thinking. We've got more wealth than we can possibly comprehend when the keys and the treasure come together. And this is just the Bible I'm talking about. There's so much more that we're going to talk about today. But just the Bible. Now, this is what I will share with you. The New Testament, when you're reading the New Testament, also known as the New Covenant, it is explaining the Old Testament through spiritual eyes. It's giving you spiritual eyes to understand the Old Testament. It is, in fact, unlocking the Old Testament. Does that make sense? So anything that you don't understand or don't know how to apply to your life currently in the Old Testament, there is a New Testament key to unlock it. It exists. But remember what God does. He stores these things up only for people who are really seeking his will. So you got to be seeking relationship with God. you got to receive salvation through his son and receive his Holy Spirit because then those keys going to work. Does that make sense? But then there's another thing you've got to do. you got to believe that the whole Bible is true. If you don't believe that the whole Bible is true, even though you have a key to unlock it, you don't even see the Old Testament as a treasure. You're not going to unlock it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So I want you to seek God about that. And this is what I'm asking you to do. So we won't spend too much time on it today because we do want to look at your business treasures today. I will say this to you. If you have an Old Testament scripture that you know has God has placed it on your heart, but you still don't understand it, I want to ask you to email me. Email me at info at truthandspirit.org and we're going to pray into the New Testament key for those scriptures. And this is important. This is important because God releases things to a multiplicity of counsel. There were, there were years when I held on to scriptures for like three, four, five years, and it took one believer to say one thing, and boom, that scripture opened right up for me, and I understood what God had been saying to me for years. Does that make sense? And so this is essential. And believe me, if I don't know what the key is, I'm going to seek other believers who do, and we're going to come back with God's response for you. Because it's time that these treasures be opened up. He has revealed these things to us. So we've got to let him open the treasures to us. So go with me to Matthew. We're still in Matthew chapter 13, but I'm going to take you to verse 52. Now watch this. It's so beautiful. Matthew chapter 13, verse 52, it says, this is, this is the Lord speaking. He said to them, therefore, every teacher of the law, that's Old Testament, the teacher of the law, who has become a disciple in the kingdom of heaven, 
disciple of the kingdom, right? They put the kingdom first. Is like the owner of a house who is brought out of his storeroom new treasures as well as old. Wow. Mm. Don't know <laughs> so it's like I know the law, but now I'm part of the kingdom. That means I receive salvation. Boom, I've got new and old treasures. Wow. And I can bring them out of my storehouse. And this is essential for where we're going because remember, this is all about advancing God's kingdom. So his Bible truth has to be in the foundation. It has to be in the foundation of what you're doing, which means you've got to be studying the scriptures every day. You've got to create a discipline of Bible study. And now I want to encourage you that devotionals are great. Even reading the Torah portions also good. But any of them are going to be limited. Devotionals are going to give you the scriptures that were important to the person who made the devotion. Torah portions are created by the rabbis and, and the portions that they believe that are important. And then you've got the parshas that go with it, but it still skips certain things. Like Isaiah 53 is completely skipped in the parshas because the rabbis don't understand it. Isaiah 53 is about Yeshua, it's about Jesus. Because they don't understand it, if you go through the Torah portions of the Parsha, you'll never get to Isaiah 53. But it's a huge treasure. That's the one where he says, I was pierced for your transgressions, I was bruised, bruised for your iniquity. The chastisement that was for you came upon me, and by, your, by my stripes you're healed. That's Isaiah 53. So my point is, don't just allow man to guide you in your Bible study. Ask God what you should be reading. Because man is going to tell you what was important to them, what blessed them. Every devotional, every Bible reading calendar, all of those things are going to highlight what was important to the person who made it. But when you ask God what to read, he's going to not only tell you what's important for you at that moment, but he's going to empower you to understand it, or he's going to connect you with someone who can help you understand it. When I say daily Bible study, that's what I'm talking about. I mean, the king is God in your Bible study because it's his book. Does that make sense? It's no better source. Now you can do additional Bible studies, like Bible reading calendars and devotionals and things like that. And there are times when those things line up beautifully with what's going on in your life. But you don't want to become dependent on that. You want to become dependent on the king himself. Because he's got to give you what he knows you need in order to build this vehicle for the kingdom. Does that make sense? All right. So now, remember in part one, which is last month, we learned that if we're trying to discover hidden, tre hidden treasures, our job is to seek wisdom. Remember we talked about that? If I seek wisdom, God is going to add riches, honor, long life, pleasant ways, peace, and eternal life. We saw all that in Proverbs chapters 2 and 3. So what I'm doing in my daily Bible study is I'm seeking wisdom. I'm seeking wisdom. But we also learned in part one that I have to seek wisdom that is connected to my industry as well. So I'm reading the Bible, but now I also have to seek wisdom that is industry based, depending on what business I'm going into, what, what is my, my niche, what is the, the industry I'm working in, I have to seek the wisdom in my industry as well. So I'm a disciple of the Lord, I'm a student of the Lord, but I'm also learning my craft and learning my industry. We talked about that in part one. That's essential because believers tend to, to not do that. We're not, we're not very faithful in seeking the wisdom of our industry. We tend to think that Lord is just going to zap us with that knowledge, and that's not how that works. He will give us the biblical knowledge, but he, will he sends us to get the other information that we need. And once we get it, he will exponentially explode it in our brain so that we really understand it and, it, and we really can apply it. Like he did for Daniel and, 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 and the three young men who were with him. They learned so quickly, but they were students of the Bible, the Torah, because the Torah at that time, and of the Babylonian learning. Everything those guys gave them, they ate it up. They were learning foreign languages. They were reading all the, the books of all the scholars at the time. They were eating all of this learning up. And this is why they became wiser than everyone else, because God himself exponentially increased their knowledge. But they had to give themselves over to the study. Does that make sense? All right. So now, third thing you need to know. We are God's treasure. When I say we, I mean people. P 
People tend to value all that stuff I was talking about. Riches, honor, long life, pleasant ways, peace, eternal life. But God values people. That's what God values. He values people. Now, it's important that I get that I am a treasure and everybody else is a treasure too. So let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. If you want to look at this to understand this beautiful treasure, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And this one is speaking specifically of believers. But then we're going to look at another one that's really talking about everybody. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 6 through 7. And it says, for God who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all surpassing power is from God and not from us. Yes. So I may just be a clay jar on the outside, but there is an amazing treasure inside of me that God himself put there because I am connected to the kingdom. Now, go with me to Psalm 139. This is by far my favorite song. Y'all know I always say stuff is my favorite, but this really is my favorite song. It really is. And then I think 119 is, is right after it. <laughs> but Psalm 139, the, the parts I want to read to you are verses 16 through, no, verses 13 through 16. Psalm 139, verses 16 through 13. This is David speaking. And he says, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, God. How vast is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I am awake, I am still with you. Actually, let's start. At, I said 13, didn't I? I started 16. Let's start at 13. I'm sorry. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body, and all the days ordained for me were written in the book before any one of them came to be. So now, what David is saying, and this is, if, if you struggle with self-image or self-esteem, I want to encourage you to meditate on 139. Meditate on it regularly. And the reason I say that is because what David is saying He's saying the reason I can see myself as a treasure, I can see myself as fearfully and wonderfully made or beautifully and wonderfully made, depending on which version you're reading, is because I know that God doesn't make junk. Because I know him as an amazing creator and I understand that he made me, I can see myself as beautiful. I can see myself as wonderful. I can see myself as a treasure. Because God made me. And all you have to do is look at anything in creation to see how amazing our God is. I look at like little ladybugs and, and things like that. And it's like, wow, he made all of that. Look at the little intricacies. And, you know, you see just the detail that he paid in creation. He didn't have to. He could have taken a really broad brush and made creation. We could have square clouds. You know what I mean? Every bird could look exactly the same. You understand what I mean? Like, he didn't have to be as detailed and specific as he was, but he did it because he is an amazing creator. And if I understand that about him, what I will understand is that I am more complex than I think. There's more in me that I even realize, and that I am a treasure on the earth. He placed me on the earth as a treasure for other people. He is well pleased in me. When he looks at me, he sees something amazing. And I am endowed with purpose. And if you don't get that out of 139, go to Romans 8. Yes. <laughs> if 139 doesn't convince you, Romans 8 should be able to drive it home the whole chapter. <laughs> but I'm going to start at verse 28, which is the one we usually, you know, we always quote Romans 8, 28. And it says, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be, to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many sisters, brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. 
So now, this is it's essential that we get this understanding. The things are working together for my good because God, he has loved me from the beginning. He knew me from the beginning, which confirms Psalm 139. This is, this, by the way, is the New Testament key to Psalm 139. <laughs> so you see how that works? <laughs> and if you're not sure about it, read Romans 7 and 8. And then you'll see that this is the key to 139. If you didn't get 139, then you read Romans 7 and 8, and then you go back and read 139, and you're going to see all types of stuff that you needed to see. Does that make sense? So here we are, and we see that God knew me from the beginning. Right from the beginning, he knew me. He predestined me to be in the image of Messiah. He has called me for a purpose. All this happened from the onset. If I get that, then there's so much more in this scripture. It talks about that the earth is waiting for the sons of God to be revealed. And I mean, there's so much more in Romans 8. I'm more than a conqueror. All that's Romans 8. If I get all of this understanding, then that means that there's a hidden treasure in me. There's stuff in me that I need that I don't even know is in there. So y'all understand what I'm saying? Most of the times we don't even get that. We're looking everywhere else when God has put some amazing things within us. Y'all understanding it? Now, I have to get that first. I have to get that I'm a treasure first before I will see other people as treasures. I can never truly value someone else until I first value myself. Now, God looks at all humanity and he sees these beautiful hidden treasures in jars of clay. He sees them and he puts even more in us when we come to him through his son and receive his Holy Spirit. He stirs up all that stuff that's already there and gives us even more so we can be the people that he created us to be. But I've got to start with seeing it in myself and receiving it for myself. Because my business, very honestly, is going to flow right out of my identity and purpose. There is no way around that. The way I see myself and what I believe I've been designed to do will make a difference in how my business flows. Misha, can you come check this? There's a little, I think maybe the, the plug isn't plugged in for the phone. It looks like it's about to go off. You see it? You can just say close that, but then you've got to um, figure out what's happening with the plug. <laughs> I'm not sure what's happening with the plug. Because it's just not. It's uh oh, I think it just. Oh, no, okay. It's, okay. Now, but check that plug over there, too, because for some reason it's not. The phone line. Oh, the phone line. Oh. Yeah, check that one because it's, it's, it's not. Oh, there you go. Yes. <laughs> All right, so now if I get that I'm a treasure, then I get that other people are treasures, then what I'm going to do is to commit myself to God's will for my life and also what he wants to do in the lives of other people. Now, I want to remind you about what he revealed to us in Discovering Hidden Treasures Part 1. Remember, we were in the book of Malachi. You remember that? He took us to the book of Malachi. I just want to give you a quick overview because we've got to take this somewhere. There's somewhere that we're going. And now you're like, we haven't talked too much about business yet. We have, but we're going to talk a whole lot more about it in a minute. <laughs> All right. So we're going to Malachi. And remember in the book of Malachi, as God was revealing it to us, he starts first with how we should relate to him. He's a great king. We should honor him as a king. He's a great father. We should honor him as a father. Then it goes to how we should treat the people in our lives, particularly family members. He's talking about the priest. And when we talk about how most believers don't even know Malachi chapter two is there. But we go straight to Malachi chapter three and say, well, man, rob God and make sure you bring your tithes and offerings into the house of God. But we skip the fact that you're not supposed to be divorcing and beating on your wife. We skip that. That's Malachi chapter two. That's essential. It's essential because there is a New Testament key that says that if husbands mistreat their wives, that God won't even hear their prayers. It unlocks Malachi chapter 2 because in Malachi chapter 2, he said, why are you flooding my altar with tears? You need to renew your covenant with your wife. When you put those two together, you go, oh, that's why blessings have been held up. You see what I mean? And it goes the other way, ladies, too. Believe that. <laughs> we got to treat spouses well. <laughs> Amen. That is the truth from God. Now, it's essential because then he gets us to Malachi chapter 3 and he tells us 
um, that he has a charge against the Levites, and that he has, you know, God himself hasn't changed, and so we are not destroyed, but we got to come back and return to him, and how can we return? Then he says, bring your tithes and offerings. Now, what's important? Let's look at what happens here. Here in Malachi chapter 3, after God said all that stuff, the Levites he was speaking to repented. It's so beautiful. We got to look at what they did. They actually turned their ways. I'm going to read verses 16 through 18. It says, then those who feared the Lord talked with each other, and the Lord listened and heard. A scroll of remembrance was written in his presence concerning those who feared the Lord and honored his name. On the day when I act, says the Lord Almighty, they will be my treasured possession. Y'all see that? It's right there. They will be my treasured possession. I will spare them just as the Father has compassion and spares his own son who serves him. And you will again see the distinction between the righteous and the wicked, between those who serve God and those who do not. Because they were complaining, what does it benefit me to serve the Lord? And we know, of course, a lot of Christian business owners say that same thing. What does it benefit me to serve the Lord? I'm doing things the right way. I'm being moral. I'm keeping the laws of the land. I'm keeping the laws of the Bible. My competitors are not restricted to that. They're cutting corners and doing whatever they want to do and making money. What does it benefit me to do things God's way? If you've been a Christian in the business for a while and you're a believer, I guarantee you at some point you said that. Because you looked at somebody else getting ahead and you were like, Lord, come on. They're making all this money. <laughs> And I'm struggling. I'm trying to do what, what honors you. But this is what we see happening with these Levites. And when they repented of that, they were like, Lord, forgive us. Forgive us for that attitude. Forgive us for not viewing you as we should view you, viewing our families and other people as we should view them. And then also bringing the tithes and offerings into your storehouse. Forgive us because we've, not, we've mishandled all of this. Then God said, you will be my treasured possession. So now they become treasured again. Yes, ma'am. Chapter 3, that was verses 16 through 18. And the treasure possession is in 17. It's in verse 17 in Malachi chapter 3. And we actually, we, we renewed our covenant with God on that particular one. And I'm going to tell you right now, that same day, God opened up the windows of heaven. You remember about 30 minutes later to me, and just since y'all remember somebody walked in here and just put money into shooting the spear. It was, it was, and then they walked right back out. <laughs> it was right after we prayed that prayer. It was right after we prayed that covenant prayer. Point being, it doesn't take God long to respond to you responding to him. It doesn't take long. The point is, you've got to line up with the will of God. You've got to line up with what God is saying to you and stop trying to be like everybody else because we are his treasured possession. Part of being the treasured possession is that you are set apart. You cannot be treasured and then also be common. You have to decide which one you're going to be. Am I a treasure or am I common? And how am I going to treat people? Am I going to treat people like they are treasures? Think about your team, your employees, your staff, your partners. Think about your customers. Am I treating them like they are a treasure in God's eyes or am I treating them like something to make money off of? Because God sees it, not just our actions, but the motivations of our heart. And that's what he is looking for, to make sure that we see his people the same way that he sees his people. And that's what we determined in the first training was true wealth, that it was people. True wealth is actually people. Now, this is what's important. This is the fourth thing. This is the meat, what we have to talk about today. Gifts, talents, abilities, Knowledge, finances, all of that is stored up in people. Yes. It's in people. Meaning, the knowledge you need, somebody has it. The money you need, somebody has it. The gifts and talents and abilities you need to help you make your business successful, it's in somebody. It's in a human. And remember what God is teaching us. I have to see those people as treasures, not as money makers, to get the treasure out of them. Does that make sense? 
Now, go with me back to Matthew chapter 13. We've been in Matthew chapter 13 most of the day. I praise God for this chapter for us today. Matthew chapter 13, we're going to go just above the parable about the pearl. There's another one in verse 44. Matthew chapter 13, we're going to read verse 44. We're going to look at this parable of the hidden treasure. Verse 44, now watch this. It says, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again. And then in his joy, went and sold all he had and bought the field. Matthew chapter 13, verse 44. And let me say this because everything else we're going to talk about is coming right out of that. So I need to make sure I read that for y'all again. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again. And then in his joy went and sold all that he had and bought that field. Now this is an important scripture. When I was a child and I read that scripture, I said to myself, why did he hide it again? He should just take it. You know, as kids, finders, keepers, those and reapers, I've done this, I'm taking it with me. This is a child's mindset because this is what kids think and this is what kids do. You have to tell them that's not yours. Take that back. It doesn't belong to you. But I find that it doesn't matter. That's not yours. You have to teach children that. And so the Lord had to talk to me about this scripture. And you guys, there's a lot of real estate people in this room. If something is found in the ground, who owns that? The rightful owner is the owner of the land. Now, there are lots of other little rights that there are. There's all types of other little rights. But if there's oil in the ground, who owns the oil? Typically, the landowner. Typically, the landowner. Typically, the landowner. Now, watch this. But watch this. Because let's say you did find it and somehow you lay claim to that treasure. We talk about oil or jewels or gold, right? Same. Exactly. If that treasure you just found is right there, how much more is probably under the surface? You see what I'm saying? So maybe you can't get away with taking that treasure that you just found. But what if there's more there? How about there probably is more there? If there's all here, there's all all of there. There's gold here, there's gold over there. There's diamonds here, there's diamonds over there. So if you found it and you just walk away with it, all you get is what you walk away with. That's all you get. Even if you can make a claim for that, even if the court will give it to you, that's all you get. You can't get the rest of the stuff in that land. Why? Because it's not your field. It doesn't belong to you, right? The owner of the field is the one who owns what's in the land. And biblically speaking, that's, that's the person who owns the plain and simple, biblically speaking. That's it. It's just the owner. That's why he said, don't move the boundary stones. Don't do, because he's like, they're the people who own it. When the widow came back and the king said she was gone for years, they told her to give, they took, the king told them to give her everything that land had made in all the years that she had gone away. Because that was biblical. Because if you own it, you get the income that comes from it because it's your land, it's your field. Now watch this. We can take, we can say, all right, boom, I found this and I'm going to take this, right? And I, and I lay claim to it. I hold it. I say, this is mine. And, and, and even if I can legally do that, let's say I can do that. What have I missed out on and what was left behind? Yes. See, my point is not that part. My point is there are ways that people will sign and they they don't have the the rights below the ground. But then somebody right. has really stooped them out of their rights. Right. Because if you right. own the field, you should have the rights below the right. ground. Right. So then that means somebody robbed them. The other person robbed them. Yeah. Biblically speaking, they still been robbed. Yeah. Because if I bought the field, I'm supposed to own the stuff that's under the field. Oh, absolutely. But see, this happens in our country all the time because we do believe in finders, keepers, losers, weepers. We, we kind of do. If you can write the language right, then you can do it. Biblically speaking, that's not right. Now, this is a big deal. Let's get why this is important. Because let's look at P. 
people, for example. All right? <clears throat> so we're talking about people. If you find a talented person and you say, I want you to work on X, Y, Z for me, and they do it. They work on X, Y, Z for you. They might do it for free. They might do it for just a contract. You get that work out of them. What if you befriended them, built a relationship with them, and they became part of your team? How much are you getting then from their gifts, talents, and abilities? And the reason I'm pointing this out is because in our country, we tend to see people for what we think their value is. If I think off the surface, I can get this from you. Actually, every time I'm relating to you, my goal is to get this out of you. That's my goal. Yeah, and I become a manipulator even though I don't mean to do it, but that's what I'm doing because I'm like the man who, who the, the, this didn't really happen in the Bible. It's my little childish way. The man who found the treasure and just ran away because I saw, ooh, I see some value. Let me get that from that person. And while you may get something from them, how much have you lost in the gifts, talents, abilities, knowledge, and finance that were under the surface in that person? See, this is a big deal because short-term relationships may get you the tip of the iceberg with the people that are around you. But it's long-term investment in humans as treasures that will actually get all of these resources into you, into your business, and into your kingdom. Because the scripture says, give, and it will be given back unto you, right? Pressed out, shaken together, running over, will men pour into your bosom. Why are people pouring into my bosom? Because I'm pouring into them. They will bless me and my business because I'm blessing them as an individual, because I value them, because I see how important they are, even sometimes when they don't see how important they are. I'm encouraging to them. I speak to them the way God speaks to me. Now, that person, I'm going to get way more than just the tip of the iceberg with them because I didn't rob their field of treasure. I bought the field. Y'all understand the difference? Instead of trying to get what I could get out of that person, I made them a partner. And that's exactly what, you know, this is Kingdom Well. That's what our Savior did with us. He did. He bought the field. He bought the field. He did not just take the treasure. He bought the whole field. But then he says to us that we got to do the same thing. Don't just try to get what you can get out of salvation. Don't just try to get what you can get out of your business. Invest completely in your, in your business. Invest completely in people. And watch what happens. This is the truth. People around us have way more of these treasures than we think they do. People are way more gifted, way more talented. They have more abilities and experience, more knowledge, and more finances than we think they have. That's just the reality. We're always thinking about those people that we don't know. If I could just have a meeting with Tony Robbins, if I could just get on this person's agenda, right? No, no. You need what God has placed around you because everything you need is in the hands of somebody that you already know or who knows somebody that you already know. It's already there. Now, this is essential in every type of relationship that we have. And I told you I was going to go to the five of the keys book. So key five, key five is intimate relationships. And the reason it's a key is because all the successful and wealthy people in this world understand that people are the real resource. They get it. Whether their heart is right about it or wrong, they still get that people are the resource. Plain and simple. Everybody gets that. But most of the people who are in lack are so busy chasing finances that they miss the true treasure is, is in humans. It's in humans. Even if you're thinking about financing your business, right? Somebody's got to make a decision about that. A human is making a decision about that. You know, it's all in the hands of a person or people. Yes, ma'am. Like Jesus. 
when Jesus chose his disciples, he prayed. He did pray. You see, that's, I know that's one of the things God is really teaching you. You seek me for who I want, where I want you, and who I want you with. Yes. You have to be anxious. Jump right. into a relationship with people. Because he knows what's there. Yes. He knows what's there. Well, some people may on the surface look great. He knows under the bottom there's there's some sabotage, some 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 some, some bad seed. So he might not want you in a relationship with them, though the surface looks right. You see what I'm saying? But for those that the surface might not look good, God knows there's all types of gifts, talents, and abilities underneath those people, underneath the surface. Does that make sense? Johanna? Yeah. One thing. You know, I, I need some soul work. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> but one thing I, that I think is, I tell my folks all the time at home, and anybody else that listens to me, you can be in such a place, a great place of need, that it makes you appear like you're greedy. Yes. You, know, you can be in such a place of need because lack looks like greed. Yeah. Yes, yeah. and then I actually address that in the book. There's deliverance from lack and there's deliverance from greed. And they look almost the same. Right. It's not the same. Right. right. But they manifest almost exactly the same. Right. Yes, they do. And the reality is, if I'm first in a relationship with the king, he's gonna, you know that scripture, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all his righteousness, then all those things will be added unto you. Above that, he says, don't worry about what you will eat and what you will drink and what you will wear. He says that first. Because he already knows you're worried about it. <laughs> like, don't worry about it. Seek me first. Stop worrying about that stuff and watch what I will do. Watch what I will do. You know, half my closet is clothes people gave me. Most of y'all in this room. I don't buy clothes. No, really. Furniture, people give me furniture. Vehicles. Pe people just been blessing us with stuff. You know why? Because we get. And when we think about the stuff, when we think about the stuff, so God will make the stuff show up. Our focus is this right here. Then God will send this stuff. But you've got to get your mind focused on the right thing. When you worry about these things, you will go and suck life right out of people. Yeah. You will rob their field. Yeah. Yeah. And when a person feels robbed, they don't have nothing to do with you. Yeah. Yeah. Do you understand? Now you've broken that relationship, and they may be getting the resource that God wanted to use in your life. Yeah. Yes. Run, right Run right through them. Yes. Because you yourself and your own soul have become a black hole. That's that same scripture in Matthew chapter 6 where he talks about you can't serve God and mammon. Mm -hmm. He says you got a good eye, then it'll be light within you. But if you got a bad eye, bad eye means you're greedy. The bad eye is looking around for stuff all the time. The good eye is generous. It's a, it's a Hebrew idiom. So it means if I'm looking around for stuff all the time, what I can get, what I can get, it's because it's a black hole in my soul. And all I'm doing is sucking up stuff. I'm supposed to be light. I'm supposed to be like a star. Yes. Philippians tells us to be shine bright like stars. So if I'm shining bright like a star, I'm giving warmth. I'm giving light. Because there's so much in me overflowing in me. But if I feel like I'm in lack and I'm in need, a, a star that dies turns into a black hole. The energy doesn't go away. It just goes within. And it starts the gravitation and pull of that star sucks everything into it. Everything into it gets crushed. And so we've got to be careful not to become those. And if we are, because soul prosperity is key too, FYI is key too. <laughs> if, if, if we are black holes, I gotta let him deal with my soul so that I can actually do right by the true wealth, which is people. I can do right by the true wealth. So let's look at the different types of relationships that God will give us. The first one that we see in key five, five biblical keys, is coaches, trainers, and mentors. Now, this is a big deal. This is a big deal because these are people that have the knowledge that you need. A coach, a, train, a, a trainer, or a mentor. Okay? Now, this is key. You cannot go to a new place without new knowledge. Just know it. If you're trying to go to a new place, a new level, do something you've never done, you need new knowledge. Yes, ma'am? Okay. <laughs> you need new knowledge. And somebody has that knowledge. Somebody has it. Now, when you seek God and he shows you the people that are already around you who can guide you in the right direction, you want to appreciate them. Let me give you an example. Um, in the biblical days, when people wanted to be a disciple of a rabbi, they had to ask him 10 times before he would say yes. Now, nobody knew that that was the rule, but the rabbis, nobody knew that. 
So a, a, a person would have to say, Rabbi, can I sit at your feet? No. Rabbi, can I sit at your feet? Now on a different day, they couldn't do 10 times the same day. So they come back later on. Rabbi, can I sit at your feet? No. Rabbi, can I sit at your feet? No. And this is how you learn, was at the feet of the rabbi. So after 10 times asking, finally the rabbi would say yes. And they would follow him and he would train them. Now, what is interesting about that is that in that day, they had to quote a rabbi. That's how you knew somebody knew so, because they were quoting the rabbi that told them what they needed to know. The beautiful thing is that our Lord wasn't even like that. John and James came to him and said, Rabbi, where are you sleeping? He said, come and I'll show you. And immediately he let them follow him. Follow him. And then he called the other ones. You come follow me. You come follow me. You come follow me. That's the reality of our Lord. He's right there waiting for you to say that you want to follow him to give you this biblical wisdom. But humans are going to be much more like the rabbis. You got to be persistent in seeking them to be your coach or your trainer or your mentor. The reason being because they don't have a lot of time. If somebody is going to invest in giving you the knowledge you need to build yourself, they want to make sure that you're serious. So you've got to be persistent like the disciples had to come to the rabbi 10 times. You got to be persistent. Now, this is what I want to tell you about that. Yes. And to also avoid any black holes because that knowledge is being yes. pulled in substance, substance other people that really aren't about investing in. Um, exactly. Forward. They're looking for people who really want to do right with that knowledge. This is how you prove to the coach, mentors, and trainers that you are serious. One, you're persistent in asking them, will you coach me? Will you mentor me? Will you be my trainer? You're persistent in going after them because you sought God about the right trainer for you. See, this is why the rabbis didn't take on the first comers because basically they were just looking for somebody to say yes. If you're just looking for somebody, you don't know who the right one is. When you sit in God's presence, he will tell you who the coach, trainer, mentor is for you. For me, I have multiple ones, but they're for different areas. And I know what area is there for. This one is for this. This one is for this. This one is for this. You understand what I'm saying? But I've sought God about it, and he's revealed it to me. So I'm persistent in sticking. I'm loyal to them. Even when they say stuff I don't like. I'm loyal to them because God told me that's my mentor, that's my coach, and I understand it, and so I stay connected with them. Does that make sense? But I'm persistent so they know it's not going to shift. I'm not there just to see if they would say yes or not testing it out. I have chosen them because God said they were the right ones for me, and I'm persistent. God gives me grace and favor in that because he's the one that chose them, and then I agree with him. Now, the next thing I've got to do is I have to do the homework they tell me to do. This part is hard. Sounds easy, but it's not. When people say, I will mentor you, or they say, read this and then come back. They might even say yes yet, because it might be the test. It feels like they're putting you off. He or she just told me to read a book. I want them to answer my questions. They just told me to read this book or watch this video. What they're actually giving you is the very thing that has blessed them. It's the first key to getting the knowledge. If you're faithful and you read the book that they tell you to read, or you watch the videos that they tell you to watch, and then you come back with intelligent questions about the very things they told you to research, guess what's gonna happen? Now they know you're serious. And they will give you time because you're a good student. Y'all understanding what I'm saying? Because at first you want somebody, honestly, we're like little chicks. We just got our mouths open. Feed me some stuff. When what a good mentor is gonna do is send you to research. They're gonna, the beautiful thing is they're gonna tell you where to go. This is the book to read. This is the video to watch. This is the place to start. They're gonna give you an assignment because that's what you got to do. They're not putting you off. That's really what you need to do to succeed. So don't think that if they are giving you anything to do, they're actually already giving you knowledge. They're not putting you off. But they don't have time to read an entire book to you or give you a whole overview of the book when you could go read the book like they did. Yes, ma'am. I just have a vision of, for those who are listening, if they're teens or young young adults, um, the Karate Kitten, 
when yes. 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 Everybody has a treasure in them, and no one has time to teach everyone anything. That has to be unlocked so that the teacher can teach us pretty much what we need. Exactly. Need to know. And, and so, when when you have found the person who's supposed to be coaching, training, mentoring you, invest in them and do the homework they give you. Because if you want to kill that relationship, don't do the homework. They're not going to talk to you anymore because you're wasting your time. They told you to read the book. You didn't read the book. You are wasting their time. They don't have time to regurgitate an entire book for you. They told you the book to read. Read the book. Then come back and you can actually discuss the book with them. On the same level. level. Now you can apply your questions to it and they'll be eager, excited to answer them because they got a good student. That makes sense. It's on two hands. Yes, ma'am. Uh, what is that? What is that? This is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna tell you afterwards. <laughs> yes. The other thing that came to mind is uh, communication is key. Yes. It's key, and, and, and there, I think there's different levels to that. But even the scripture that talks about how um, when a learner learns something, to go mm-hmm. back to the teacher mm-hmm. or the parent, and then the parents have to provoke. The kids, so it's like there's a, a medium so that yes. each can bless each other. So each can bless each other, other exactly. And, and give the information that needs to be exchanged between That's right. That's right. Now this this is key because I'm doing the homework. I'm persistently telling them I do want to be your protege. I want to be, you know, um, the person that you train and teach. I want to be your student, right? But then I also have to realize that if they are successful, because that's why I want them to mentor me and train me, then they are busy. I have to take their time very seriously. Because they have other things that they've got to do. So when they say show up at one o'clock, you show up at one o'clock because it tells them I care about your time. I'm not trying to waste the valuable time you have when you told me it started at 1 o'clock. Three times. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Because that's another way they will drop you like a bad habit because I don't have time for people that's not serious. If you're not serious enough about your own business to show up when I tell you to show up, then why am I investing my valuable time in you? You don't even see the wealth of your own time. Y'all understanding what I'm saying? That, that would not go over well with successful people because they don't have time for the games. So you got to get, and honestly, it's easy. Be on time, be persistent, do the homework. That's easy. Wasn't that easy? I said it, it was easy. But if you're not used to that, if you're not disciplined, you will miss good mentors. And those same people will not come around again. You'll have to ask God for grace for a new mentor because that one is not going to talk to you again. Plain and simple. You miss you miss that opportunity. And it's key that we get that. It's key that we get that. Because God will put beautiful people, beautiful people in front of us. The next people are going to be your team. Your employees, your partners, um, the people that are a part of the business that you're building. Now, they're the ones with the gifts, the talents, and the abilities. Right? They've got what you need because it does not matter what industry you're going into. Even if you're doing an online business, y'all know how that works. I'm going to do online business from home, so it just needs to be me. You're still going to need other people. Just know that. You still got to connect with somebody else. You're going to need somebody else's gifts, talents, and abilities. Automatically know it. So if I get that, then what I've got to remember is that these people have to be unlocked sometimes. When David was in the stronghold of Agilam, the Lord sent him men who were indebted, discontented and distressed. And if you look at this band of misfits, you go, well, why you send these people that's in the same situation I'm in? Those people are not going to be able to help me, but they became his mighty men and mighty army. Those jokers took down thousands of people. Y'all understanding what I'm saying? Thousands. And so what you got to then do is you got to ask God, Lord, are, is this my team? Is this my team? Because there are people that you will want to be your team, and God's like, that's not your team. 
that's not your team. I got something else for them. Don't you rob their field. I'm doing something else in their lives. But then other people who say, that's your team. And usually the ones that are your team are the ones that need the most work. Just know it, because you're not going to want those ones. You're going to be trying to rebuke the devil. Really? The devil sent these people. No, he didn't. They are filled with unlimited gifts, talents, and abilities. Stuff you don't even know is inside of them. Some stuff they don't even know is there. But the reality is, God is investing in them and he's gifting them to you because he knows that what he put in you can unlock what's in them. As long as you get this one right here, that you're a treasure and they're a treasure, you can unlock all of gifts, talents, and abilities for the purpose of this business that's building God's kingdom. But you have to see them as a treasure. You have to see them as a treasure. Throughout the years, I've had people tell me, I don't know why you didn't kick me out. I said, because I see you. I see what God is doing in you. Y'all understand what I'm saying? And then once you see it, you have to invest in it. But these are people that God sent because you prayed about it. Like we was talking about, Yeshua prayed about his disciples. I don't think you ever said that. But he prayed because God said, these are the ones. And when he tells you these are the right ones, then you start developing what you see in them. Just like that mentor is helping to grow you, you start growing them. That's your team. And you treat them well. Not as they expect to be treated, but as God expects you to treat them. A lot of times we treat people who never had anything based off of what they haven't had, and we give them just a little bit more than what they're used to. That is still not God's standard. Y'all understanding what I'm saying? Just because they think it's good doesn't mean it's enough for God. You treat them based on what God has told you. And when you do that, you actually unlock them fast. If you want to keep them in the mindset of lack, treat them like they're poor. Treat them like they don't have anything and try to make them dependent on you. If you do that, you will keep them locked up. But if you treat them like they're special, like they're important, like they're valuable, even if you can't pay them off the bat, but you let them know, I want to pay you. I want to be able to bless you. I want you to have a health plan because you deserve it. And when we build this business, that's exactly what we're going to have. But you let them know that they're valuable enough for it. That it is for them. Right now, maybe y'all are sacrificing, but it is for them. They are worthy of it. And you have them solve life problems. Because while y'all are building the business, all types of stuff is going to happen. In their lives, in your life, you actually solve life problems because then their gifts and talents can flow even more freely. If they've got issues with their family, Issues with their, their spouses and their children. They got issues with their finances. You're like, well, I'm not trying to do that. I got to help my whole team get out of debt. Then that's what you have to do. Because all of this is going to become available. And they will be the most loyal people you'll ever see. David's team, y'all remember them jokers broke through the Philistines just to get him a cup of water. <laughs> no, people you hire don't do stuff like that. That's because we invested in those guys. He went with them and led them to get their wives and children back when the Malachites came and stole them and said that those guys would die for him because they knew he would die for them. That's a real team. And in that way, they would do stuff they didn't even think they could do. They talked about one of them was, was tearing up lions, another one was, was jumping in a pit and killing animals, another one fought over a thousand people with a sword that was stuck to his hand. Like, <laughs> stuff that they never thought they could do. They could do it. Because he believed in them the way God believed in him. David knew God took a chance on him when he was a little red-headed boy on the side of the mountain. And so he took a chance on those guys that God sent him. Does that make sense? So now let's look at customers. Customers also valuable people. Instead of trying to get them to bless your business, find out what they need. Because this is how they become loyal also. When you find out what your customers need, where they are struggling, you might want to give them this. They need this. That's how Discovering Your Divine Design came about. I was like, they need business coaching, Lord. People need business coaching. He said, some people don't even know what business they should be doing. Some people don't even know they have a purpose yet. Start there. So you got to actually create what meets the needs of your customers. Because when you do, they will finance your business. They will ask you, when you come out with some more stuff? So I think I bought all the stuff you do already. What else are you about to do? 
Why? Because they know that you're paying attention to their needs. And what's going to come out of you is going to be good for them. It's not manipulative. And it's not to make you and your business a dollar. What you are doing is actually blessing them. So people are looking to buy things that will bless them. Does that make sense? But if I'm focused on that, then this is where we'll see this finance coming. This is, of course, the second, the second stream of finance. The first stream of finance is so people who sow into your business. Raise capital. So I'm actually going to answer that question now because what we're looking at here, there's a few different ways that you can do this. Your own money, of course, you can sow into your business and God can bless it. People you know can sow into your business just because they want to bless you or they can actually buy stock in your business depending on the type of organization that you have. Or and even if it's like some other type of not the stock organization, but you know that you can bless them back after they bless you later. That's an investment. People can invest in business. Some will sow, some will invest. Then, of course, you also can get loans. You know that we can get loans, but that is like your last resort. This is actually, let me see, it's in here. It's on, the, it's on the key three, stewardship, financial stewardship. And we talk about the fact that God will sometimes have you get a loan. 